Hi guys, welcome back to the wood turning section of my YouTube channel. Basically, today we've been in the shack checking out a few pieces of wood, or should I say rough turn bowls, that I've had drying for the last 14 16 months. Thought you guys might appreciate a look at them. Uh, most of it is. Uh, sweet chestnut but there are a couple of pieces of uh, ash in there this being one of them ash is pretty much ash is pretty much ash as you know we'll make a decent bowl a little salad bowl for somebody there's the core i took out of it didn't have the the time to put a foot on it and hollow the center out so I just left it. I thought it might have split, but it hasn't. It'll be uh, easy to bob back on the lathe. Put a foot on it and uh, turn it. There we go. Piece of ash. I was hoping there might have been a little bit of olive ash in there, but uh, unfortunately not. Right, what shall we have next? Here we go. <clears throat> now this is going to make some of you wince. <clears throat> this is one of the la one of the last pieces of uh, laburnum that I got from a school which is local to me. We had a bad bad storm come through one night. Uh, it took down quite a number of their trees uh, a couple of them were laburnum old laburnums uh, been growing there for probably 40 or 50 years uh, my daughter asked if I could have some pieces they, said they agreed and I got a load of it that day barely made it back in the car we had that much and this is one of the last pieces uh, I, I probably still got a Maybe a couple of hundred pound in weight of it, but uh, it's getting uh, pretty low now. As I said, this piece might make you wince. Most wood turners would go, ouch, I am not turning that thing. And there's why. You're probably looking at this and thinking, if he puts that on his lathe, he must be suicidal. And normally, I would agree with you, but I have an idea, guys. <clears throat> I have an idea. Basically, what I'm going to do is let go of my hand. Basically, what I'm going to do is, guys, I'm going to drill. Come on, behave yourself. I'm going to drill some holes through with a long drill bit through that through there maybe two or three of them and then into the said holes I'm going to force either aluminium or brass bar I may actually uh, <coughs> put some epoxy in there as well now uh, as you probably know brass and aluminium are a heck of a lot softer than high-speed steel so your, your turning tools, your normal wood turning tools, will handle brass and aluminium quite easily. It's no problem to them. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to basically put three or four pins of brass or aluminium through, and then turn them. And then hopefully, as the as the shape develops, the the round bar will go elliptical the end of it will appear elliptical as you turn it the round shape and it should look nice it should uh, show up really well against the dark timber but that is uh, it has so much potential that piece of wood it's dangerous if I uh, if I, if I weren't going to pin that, there's no way would I put that on my lathe. No way. 
it is just you are begging for that piece there ending up in your skull and bearing in mind this is laburnum which is a dense heavy wood it would not be the best of days for you if that thing hit, hit you full on in the face or anywhere in the head you would be in a bit of a bad way even at a couple of hundred rpm that would do some serious damage let alone four six eight hundred rpm guys if you ever see a piece of wood like this please do not attempt to turn it unless you're taking measures that you know will stop it from detaching okay like i'm going to do as i said i'm going to drill through with a an extra long drill bit and then knock through brass or aluminium bar in three or four places so that it, it cannot detach and then turn it but please do not attempt to turn a piece like this without some sort of precaution like that you are just asking for a visit to the hospital if not a visit to the undertakers and we uh, none of us want that none of us want that guys so be very very careful don't attempt it <clears throat> again that's what I'm gonna do with this although actually no no I'm not gonna do that with this it has got it looks like a crack there but it's not it's not actually propagated all the way through can you see it's not there it is on there on that side but not on the outside we've got there it, there's a bit of a, a fissure there which appears on the outside which will me make a nice detail but I've tried this one and this this ball is actually sound this this ain't gonna fly apart but without precautions this certainly would do not to try to turn a piece like this without precautions such as pinning or or whatever super glue wouldn't hold this thing together no way and you'd need bottle after bottle after bottle of super glue but it uh, it needs pinning and that's exactly what i'm going to do probably with brass rod actually not aluminium right it's a lovely wood and uh, some of you even though i'm going to pin it are probably shaking your heads but normally i wouldn't but it's such a beautiful wood is laburnum and this piece has got so much going off in it i uh, i am gonna do that it'll be a lot of work pinning it and turning it but it'll be worth it i do think right moving on to the last set of balls oh here we go <coughs> now then who can spot the mistake there we go can you see it <laughs> I went too I went too close <laughs> and and uh, unfortunately the screw chuck hole <laughs> made an appearance you might say but uh, that's no problem what I shall do is turn the ball and put a cabbage on on the inside and probably some sort of decoration I may put uh, an old vintage coin on the bottom which will cover that all up and it will add, add uh, interest to the bowl I'm not going to throw it away because it is another crotch piece of wood and it is beautiful look at the feather detail in that absolutely astonishing I ain't throwing that away even though it's got a bloody hole through it no way put a nice cabbage on in the bottom Scottish stone cabbage on in the bottom and uh, an old vintage Victorian coin on the bottom 
should uh, cover it up nicely nobody will be any wiser to it in fact if anything it'll add uh, a little bit more detail to it a little bit more interest second bowl again there you've got that feather detail going up beautiful piece of wood again sweet chestnut the largest bowl this is a good 12 inch in diameter actually I think it's a little bit bigger it's about 13 inch maybe just over 13 inch <coughs> this is going to make a nice large-ish bowl or should we say a medium bowl sweet chestnut as I was telling you about on the previous video guys the, the size of chuck jaws if you do get a coring gizmo you know if you do start coring uh, blanks uh, if you are going to start get yourself this is basically a one way chuck stronghold chuck which is probably in my eyes the best chuck on the market um, these are the standard jaws well they're not these are the dovetail jaws they're the standard size that comes with it but these are the dovetail type whereas the standard jaws that come with it have actually got little serrations on them um, but I have got another pair for it which are about three and a half inch four inch in diameter and basically you need those for when you're coring bowls because you need a tenon that large that's the size of the tenon that they grip onto and you need a tenon that large because when you're coring there's a heck of a lot of friction involved and uh, friction and various other forces and you need that chuck to get a really really secure bite um, if I was to try coring a, whoop, if I was to try coring a ball this, this size in those jaws there eight times out of ten that ball would come off the chuck it sounds daft but believe me I've, I've experienced it numerous times so I know these things uh, it used to happen time after time until I got the big jaws once I got the big jaws and started using those I've never had one separate from the chuck never so just one thing to bear in mind guys if you do get a, a core in if you do start coring uh, you know invest just yourself in a big set of jaws that take a big old bite on a big old tenon and uh, you won't look back right guys that's about it that's some of the wood we've had dry drying for the last 14 months there we are all down there I'm looking forward to turning it it's not quite dry yet uh, I start finish turning at about 12% so that's going to take about another four months maybe six months so that'll be drying in my shed which luckily acts like a kiln during the summer and dries out bowls pretty quickly but not too quickly not quickly enough to start splits and cracks all right guys hope you've enjoyed looking at some of the wood i'm sure you'll agree that some of it is absolutely stunning especially the crotch bowls here beautiful and uh I hope you'll join me on my future videos. I've got plenty of ideas in mind and I hope you'll join me as we uh, as we go through them. All right guys, thanks a lot for joining. I'll catch you later. Take care in those workshops and see you later. Bye-bye.